Welcome back to another episode of Decoding Project 2025, a project of the Taking Down Trump podcast. I'm Tristan Snell. We're going to dive right in, and it actually ends up being very of the moment to be talking about this. Uh, we're going to talk about Project 2025's section on the Department of Justice and what Donald Trump plans to do to erode that vaunted institution even more than it already has been. Uh, we're, you know, there's a lot that comes from the right about all oh, your weaponizing DOJ. I'm going to start with a little bit of a preamble today because we're taping this now just in the wake of New York City Mayor Eric Adams getting indicted by the feds for taking money and gifts and uh, and and basically phonied up campaign contributions uh, from the Turkish government. That got an indictment out of the feds. But Clarence Thomas, $4 million in secret unreported gifts, and he's just sitting there. Nobody's doing a thing. DOJ under Joe Biden went and indicted, and they're, they're about to try him again. They indicted, convicted Hunter Biden. And yet we've got folks like Matt Gates who skated. Before that, in years past in down in South Florida, Jeffrey Epstein skated the first time he was investigated. You're telling me somehow that the weaponization of the Department of Justice is against conservatives? To my mind, I'm seeing a lot of these folks that are right wing or right wing cronies managing to skate. And then you do see properly indictment of Adams, the conviction of Bob Menendez. But this is ridiculous if you're trying to say, oh, it's somehow very much unfair to Trump. It's like, no, no, no. Trump and a lot of people that are allied with Trump have been getting away with everything. Meanwhile, it, the feds don't seem to have a problem finding a way to prosecute Eric Adams or Bob Menendez. Okay. This seems to be a little bit is there a pattern here? I don't know, but it certainly isn't a pattern in favor of, oh, it's weaponization against conservatives. That's insane and defies all logic and facts. But let's just talk about what else they want to do to this. Uh, one of the points that they say very early on, this is a page 548 that I just find rich, is they, they talk about renewing DOJ's focus on violent crime. Uh, but I'm just going to note that apparently that doesn't include assaulting the Capitol Police. They don't want, you know, oh, those are political prisoners. Never mind the massive amount of violent crime that took place on January 6, 2021. Apparently that doesn't count when they're talking about renewing DOJ's focus on violent crime. And let's talk about that. So somehow if it's, if it's done by somebody in a suit, that makes it not criminal. Is that really what we're going after here? A lot of the drive here is that they want to get rid of cases they don't like. In fact, it says so in the next page in the document. They want to come in on day one of a new Trump administration and do a full review of all cases and shut down any that they don't like. They want to give Donald Trump the power to completely kill cases. That is a direct assault on DOJ's historic independence from the White House. If you have DOJ just working as a subunit of the president completely, you're not going then that it, what it means is that anything else that happens in the administration or involving the president that is criminal is just not ever going to get looked into. Of course, that's what Donald Trump wants, right? He had a horribly criminal administration and he doesn't want DOJ getting into his business anymore, right? He doesn't want another documents case. He doesn't want another DC J6 case. Those cases as they currently stand, which are not dead, mind you, they've been delayed, but they're definitely not dead. He wants to get rid of them. This is basically code for on page 549 that those cases are done. Jack Smith will be unplugged. This will happen, guaranteed. If Trump were to win, he's inaugurated on January 20th. My prediction would be that, that Smith would be fired and his entire operation shut down before the end of January he would be done within the first 10, 11 days of a new Trump presidency. And it's right here. You just have to, you just have to read it. 
He also wants to get rid of the FBI's independence, place it directly under the AG's control. Historically, the FBI has operated as a as part of the Department of Justice, but kind of a autonomous part of, of, of DOJ that really kind of operated on its own. This was also uh, manifested in the fact that the FBI director serves a 10-year term, and it is at the direction of the president, but it's meant to be off election cycle, right? So a new incoming president often will then inherit the FBI director from the previous administration. That's typically how that works. Sometimes the FBI director steps down before that 10-year term is up, but that's the way it's supposed to work so that we have independence of this important investigatory arm. It needs independence so that it can hold the actual administration accountable. There shouldn't be a situation in which the executive branch just gets a free pass, but that's exactly what Donald Trump wants. He wants this to be a criminal autocracy. That's what he wants. And he wants no accountability at all. So what he wants to do is get rid of that 10-year term and place the director directly under the president's control. So a new president coming in can fire the FBI director, push them out, get his own FBI director in there, and then have somebody loyal to him to make sure that person turns a blind eye to the administration's criminality but goes after the administration's opponents. This is how dictators get going. That This is exactly what this is. You want weaponization of DOJ? Go read Project 2025, because this is where you're seeing it. If you do this, you're going to end up with a patsy as the FBI director, and you're going to end up with Donald Trump getting to do whatever he wants, and the Supreme Court has already given him immunity, so there, there will be no guardrails on him. He will be completely above the law. Nobody will stop him. That is what he is asking for here. And we make, we need to make sure that we don't let him have it. Even if you're a Republican, most of the Republicans I know that have any kind of legal or law enforcement background are very much by the book, law and order, true blue, all the way. Like, like then uh, they're, Interestingly enough, there are a lot of the folks that I know who are Republican who have decided to get off the Trump bus or never got on it to begin with. Okay, even if you are a Republican, many of you out there are probably really, really into law and order and rules being followed. This is the exact opposite of that. Okay, you might have wanted Nikki Haley, you might have wanted Mike Pence or Ted Cruz, somebody like that. I don't agree with those people, but they might have been more likely to follow the rules and not operate outside the law. Donald Trump doesn't care. Donald Trump is going to do whatever the hell he wants, and it's right here in this document, and we already saw it in the first term that he had, right? They also, this is telling, they want to shut down all law enforcement and national security investigations into Russian and Chinese bots and operations. So all of the misinformation, all of the attempts at election interference, all of the hacking, they just want to say, you know what, go ahead, shut it down. Russia and China, you can do whatever you want. And again, the irony here where in most of the rest of this document, Project 2025 goes berserk on China and is very anti-Chinese, why? Because it's good for playing up xenophobia and racism with the MAGA base. So when it's for politics, they're all anti-China, but it, where it actually would matter in real actions being taken to combat misconduct and sharp-elbowed behavior by China, these guys are absolute suckers. They, where it really matters, Trump and Project 2025 are weak on China. You know, it's the, you know, there's the whole old Teddy Roosevelt thing about, you know, that foreign policy was you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. Don't have a lot of like overblown rhetoric, but have a Navy that's like modern and well-equipped and ready to defend American interests all over the globe. That was the Roosevelt doctrine on foreign policy. Trump is exactly the opposite. He is speak super loudly and carry no stick at all. All of his bullshit on China, it's all talk. When you actually get down to what he would do in office, he would basically let Russia and China run amok. And it's really what happened in his first term. Why should we be surprised? But it's right here in writing. All of the bad stuff they're doing in cybersecurity, all the work that we're doing as America to combat that, 
he would turn around and just shut it all down. Day one. And Russia and China would get to infiltrate our system and spread misinformation and influence our politics as much as they want. They want to hijack and completely pervert the Civil Rights Division, which is really one of the best divisions in DOJ historically. They want to turn that division into a unit that would prosecute diversity efforts. So rather than what it has done in the past, where it's done a lot of great work to vindicate the rights of folks whose civil rights are being violated in, in say, the Jim Crow South and still efforts in that part of the country to this day to actually make sure that people who are being discriminated against actually see justice. No, 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 no. We're going to actually go to companies and organizations that are trying to make sure that their leadership or their workforces reflect America and give people a fair chance, and we're going to prosecute them. So it's basically a, you know, whiteness police or kind of a you know white supremacy police. That's what they want to do to the civil rights division. They want to make it about the civil rights of their white base. It's civil rights for MAGAs. That's what they want to turn it into. Uh, I just, it's amazing. Again, the, the points here where they say, as we all like to say, the, they, they said the quiet part out loud. It's like, You'd think that they would have had this up their sleeve, but they wouldn't actually have bothered to put it in writing. The most amazing thing about Project 2025 is the fact that it's all right there and we can all read it. And the fact that we've come back and actually shown a light on it, I think that they thought, oh, it's buried in this thing. The libtards will never read it. It'll, you know, the, it's too big for the media to cover. It's too many pages. It's too dense. The journalists will never dig into it. Surprise! We're there. We're right in here. We figured this out. It even is filtered into the mainstream media. All right. But a lot of it is the work of all of you at home, all of you online who are making sure that we're being loud about this and we put them on the defensive. Okay. A little bit more in here. They also want to prosecute pharmacists and patients for simply allowing patients to be able to do what they want with their own medical situations with, say, abortion drugs, they're going to do that. So you're going to have a abortion police force. It, it makes sense. It goes right in there with their pregnancy tracking database that they're going to have nationwide. So, you know, they'll have like a whole dashboard where they can look and see, oh, so-and-so is having an abortion. Oh, so-and-so went out of state to have that abortion. Oh, so-and-so got these pills. And then what? Send the FBI to their house? Or maybe the Secret Service, because we know that they're actually going to take the Secret Service off of serving the president and put them into immigration enforcement. Maybe they'll end up being uh, roped into abortion enforcement, too, to be the pregnancy police. But if you want, again, you want to talk about weaponizing DOJ, this would be the greatest perversion of DOJ that I can think of in the last, like, 70 years or so. This is a complete, a complete twisting of DOJ's mission. And finally, how, of course, how are they going to accomplish all of this? As they have been saying throughout all, all of this wonderful document, they want to pack DOJ with their cronies. They don't want to actually have to get anything passed by the Senate as they're constitutionally required to do. They want to drastically increase the number of political appointees, and they're going to just shove all of these people in there so that they can change the Department of Justice, make it completely reliant and dependent on the president, reporting only to the president, change the FBI so that it's also the, doing the same thing, all of those things. So yeah, I think that we already see, in my view, a bias where when Democrats commit these kind of crimes of corruption or financial misconduct, uh, there's a hammer brought down on them because Democrats and Republicans agree unanimously that somebody like Eric Adams, it looks like he should be getting prosecuted based on what we see so far. He deserves his day in court. Maybe he's innocent. I don't think so. Probably looking at all of that evidence, it's pretty damning. It's very, very detailed. But somehow when it's a Republican getting prosecuted, they magically get off the hook or they're able to delay it. That entire side of the aisle says it's a witch hunt and that none of it's true. 
Uh, and, and so that's where we're at, where only Democrats seem to still believe in equal justice before the law and no one being above the law and an increasingly large number of Republicans simply don't believe that anymore. They just don't. They don't believe anybody should follow the rules or be accountable. And they don't believe that DOJ should have anything to do with policing anything that happens in a presidential administration. And if you are a Republican and you still believe in people actually following the rules and the rule of law being upheld, this is an election in which it makes sense to cross the aisle. I'm not expecting you to be there all the time. Go back. I hope that we'll be able to say you can go back in a few years to supporting Republicans as much as you want. And we can go have back to having regular normal policy disagreements again. But this ain't no normal election. This is the rule of law versus autocracy. That's what this is in the DOJ section of Project 2025. Puts that in black and white. You can go read it for yourself. That's our show. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Decoding Project 2025, part of Taking Down Trump. If you like what you're hearing, please make sure to follow this podcast so all of these episodes are automatically downloaded to your devices every week, a couple times a week now as we're doing these more often. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter as well as to subscribe for free to my Substack. We're doing D Decoding Project 2025 over there as well, so make sure you don't miss that. And we'll see you next time.